So in this video we're going to see how to solve an exact differential equation. And the example we're doing is 4x cubed y y prime equals negative 6x squared y squared. In order to see if it's exact and then solve it as an exact OD, we need to put it in what's called differential form. And there's the formula for differential form there. We have dx and dy, the differentials, and those come from the Leibniz notation for the derivative, dy dx. So we need to replace y prime with that notation to put it in this form, right? So let's just do it that way. I'm realizing right now a better way to do it. So we can actually start off right at the very beginning by replacing y prime with dy dx. That's what we want to do. Let's do it. This will avoid what went wrong. We just tried this a minute ago. And then to, of course, kind of clear the fraction and get rid of that dividing by dx, we're just going to multiply both sides by dx. Does that make sense? So what do you do when you have fractions in an equation? You multiply by the denominator to clear them away. So if we multiply both sides by dx, you'll get 4x cubed y dy equal to negative 6x squared y squared dx dx. Alright, multiplying both sides by dx. So then you multiply over here and the dx's cancel and then over here it's just dx. So it's now in differential form, but it doesn't really match the formula. So for the formula, we want to get the dx part first, then the dy part, then equals, then zero. Uh, we can get to that pretty easily if we just add 6x squared y squared dx to both sides. So it'll then be positive on the left. And the dy term will still be there. And you'll have it in differential form. So m is 6 x squared y squared, right? m is the part in front of dx, and n is 4 x cubed y, the part in front of dy, x, y, m, n. So the original function we're looking for uh, actually leads to this differential equation via partial derivatives. Partial derivatives were taken of this function that we don't know, and we're going to use partial integration to get back to it. Um, to make sure this whole process works, you can do a check that the second mixed partial derivatives of that function are equal. Without going into all that, um, just check that the partial derivative with respect to y of m and the partial derivative with respect to x of n are in fact the same. Let's try that out now. Treating x as if it were a constant, taking the derivative of 6x squared y squared, we would get 12x squared y. So treating x as a constant, just taking the derivative for y. Taking the derivative of n and treating y as a constant, we would get 12x squared y. Hey, they're the same. So if these match up, then it is exact. And that means you can proceed with the process. If not, then you need to try another method. All right. So we're going to now do sort of the opposite of this, partial derivatives, and do partial integration. So integrating these things with respect to one of the two variables, treating the other variable as if it were a constant. We're going to integrate 
m with respect to x. So. Doing a kind of like that. So thinking about y as a constant, what would we get if we integrated six x squared? Be two x cubed and uh, y squared still there because it's multiplied as if it were a constant. So taking the partial derivative with respect to x of this would lead to that, but taking the partial derivative of this and any other function that just had constants in y would also lead to that. So the constant of integration now becomes a function of the other variable. Now, it may be 0, uh, or it may actually have something that has y in it. We won't know until we do the other integral, whether there's a piece that just had y. So let's now integrate n with respect to y. What is n? So now thinking of y as our variable, we're treating x as if it were a constant. The integral of y is y squared over 2. So what we get here is 2x cubed y squared. Squared, right? The over 2 goes with the 4 to give you that 2. Now, if we were to take a derivative, a partial derivative with respect to y of this, there could have been some other function, x. And its derivative would have just been 0. So it could be there. Now, you just compare these two. So do you want to include any pieces that show up. Uh, we have these constant things here to remind us that, hey, this one doesn't show you pieces that would have uh, just had y. So you need to check the other list for those. So you know, if there was a there was a, a y squared down here, that would be c y, and you would include that. Uh, similarly, this dx, or d of x, um, says, hey, you should check the other integral because there might have been some piece that only had x. And you wouldn't have seen that unless you integrated with respect to x. So maybe there was something like a e to the x. And then that would have been d. And you would include that. So you need to include all the pieces that appear but obviously, if something appears in both lists, you don't include it twice. You just include it once. So include anything that appears, but don't include something twice if it appears twice. So the information in 3 and 4 should be enough to get our solution. And what we do is we take those pieces, and we just set them equal to constant. So we don't have but one piece, the 2x cubed y squared. So that's actually all that's going to be in our solution. So this one isn't very interesting. Whose idea was it to do the example of this one? A lot of times you'll get implicit solutions, but if you can solve for y, then it's a good idea. Uh, because it makes your, you know, normal analysis of two variable equations is based on functions. 
If you could solve for y and make it look more like the functions you know, you'll be able to understand it better, um, put it into certain technology tools. But you could still get graphs of this and work with this as a two-variable equation. Um, and you could still find the value of c if you had an initial condition. Um, but uh, in this case, we can't solve for y. You could, and you could take the square root, but you would end up with this plus or minus square root thing that really wouldn't be y as a function of x. So I'd say, by if possible, I mean if y is a function of x when you do solve, then go ahead and try to solve. Um, maybe verifying the solution would try to make more sense of this. So. We have. Uh, so C is essentially the functional value that we're looking at, pretty much. Well, C is a function, yes. C is a constant. It is, here. But it, is, it could be. Uh, at the uh, end, at the end, it's a constant. When we first do that integration, it, it's a variable, a uh, function. But what, so I'm here, curious, it's a function of y. But I guess can we look at the solution as C being the functional value of to execute the y squared? Yeah. Now. Our typical process for finding the verifying the solution is take the function, take its derivatives, put it in the differential equation. So how do we do that with this? Because it is kind of different, right? Let's go to our original differential equation. I mean, I guess either one. I think you want to use the Leibniz notation. And you can see that you would need to know what y is explicitly and what dy dx is explicitly. So this doesn't really lend itself to our normal verifying solution procedure. And in fact, that's not really how we're going to approach it. What we are going to do is use implicit differentiation, which we brought up a little earlier. So it is related to this. So let's just go through and let's take the derivative of this thing. And this is a full derivative with respect to x. All right, well, the right hand side's pretty easy. It's just 0, right? Derivative of a constant 0. On the left, you've got to remember that y is a function of x. And so you have two functions here. You need to use the product rule. Remember the product rule? So think of one piece as being the 2x cubed, and the other piece as being the y squared. So let's go ahead and take the. So you just do the first one. So the first times the derivative of the second. plus the derivative of the first times the second. All right. Now, the derivative of 2x cubed with respect to x is pretty straightforward, right? It's a function of x. It's a derivative with respect to x. What's the derivative of 2x cubed with respect to x? 6x squared. 6x squared, right? And what about this? So here we need to think about the 
sort of order of operations that you need to first take the derivative of this function squared. And so you need to use the power rule, which says, OK, you need to do 2 times the Right, so if it was just x, it would be 2x, right? Um, so here you still have that 2 times y, but because of the chain rule, you then need to have a dy dx there. Remember that from implicit differentiation? Oh, it's multiplied, right. Thank you. So yeah, I mean, it, the main operation is the square. And so taking the derivative when you have something squared is you bring the 2 out front, and then you have whatever was squared. You normally don't have this, because normally that variable is x, and dx dx is just 1. So you wouldn't write that. But with implicit differentiation, you have to think of the chain rule. You have to think of, oh, I have to take the derivative of that now. So if dy dx equals what we saw for it, it's, it's, that's verified, right? Yeah, so you can take this and you can go back to the prime notation or to the differential form to compare with what you were originally given. But what prime was equal to? So let me just combine these. It would be 4x cubed y, y prime plus 6x. And then we'll compare that with the original differential equation. Which happened to also be in prime notation. And you can see they're the same. So that's the way you want to check it is with the implicit differentiation. I have a question about, um, when we, if you go back to the top or before we first started the problem, 